All right, let's figure out what to do with your life. All right. So I wanted to make this video because I started my career at a job that I really didn't like. And I don't think there's anything worse than being in a mismatch where every single day you're just trying to find a way to be excited to get up out of bed in the morning to go to this really crazy job that might not be your thing. I know that sounds dramatic, but I think a lot of people have this sort of relationship with work where you dislike or actively try to avoid the thing that you do eight to 12 hours a day. There seems to be this common mindset where, oh, I can only be happy if I'm an athlete, a celebrity, an entrepreneur, but I think it's a lot less toxic if you can find something that's maybe a little bit more attainable that you really like. I know a lot of people have a different relationship with work where they want to have the best exchange of their time for money or maybe their time for status. So maybe it makes sense to just chase the thing that pays the most. But I would argue that if you go into something that doesn't energize you, you might be worse off even for those factors in the long run. So with all that in mind, I'm here to help you figure out the perfect desk job for you. So check this out. I'm gonna throw three buckets up here. All right, yeah, special effects. Okay, now think about which one of these resonates with you and obviously it could be multiple. It should resonate with you outside of a work context. So don't just think about who you are by day because maybe you were forced into being that person. Think about who you are when no one's paying you to be that person. Okay, so number one, we have the analyst. I think we all know this person. It's somebody that can find the value within things. This is that person who likely had all the data points in their head growing up. The numbers just really resonate and they can retain them and then they can take those numbers and synthesize some sort of argument with them. I think it's really easy to understand if you're this person by looking at your fandom. Most people are super fans of anything, be that a movie, be that a sports team, and they're constantly arguing, referring to some past event or referring to some statistics. I actually think that those people usually match this bucket. You know when someone starts talking about sports and they say something like, oh, LeBron James is 37 years old, he's averaging 25 points per game, so on a longevity basis, you have to make the argument that... And then they just keep going on and you're just like, why can't you apply this to your job? Yeah, that's the type of person who's an analyst and should be in a job where they're analyzing. Got it, got it, see how we're doing this? Okay, second, builder. This one should be really obvious. Just look at your life. Did you make a YouTube channel? Did you make a mobile app? Did you make a wooden bench? Literally anything. If you just like to create value from nothing, then you're a builder. I think another good way to identify that you're a builder is that you're not stressed when things are chaotic or they're not in their end state. So builders are really good at just looking at something in a chaotic form and knowing, okay, if we go through some sort of process or if we work with the right people, we're gonna get to that end state that we want to. So if you don't freak out when things are all over the place, you might be a builder. And lastly, we have the connector. Everyone knows a connector because they connect people. At some point, this person's been the life of the party. This is most likely the person who has created some sort of group chat or group me about some weekend that everybody's going to get together for. Also another good signal, if you're high school friends or friends with your work friends or if you went to secondary education, if your college friends or friends with your high school friends are also friends with your work friends, if you just got all the people in your life knowing each other, you probably are a connector of some sort. Okay, now that we have our three buckets, the analyst, the builder, the connector, I need you to imagine you have 10 stones. Yeah, I think you know where this is going. And you can only allocate those 10 stones into these three buckets. So try to have your stone allocation match your personality as accurately as possible. I can go first as an example to make this a little bit more clear. All right, first analyst. This is my weak point. I'm not really good at understanding the full sequence of the specific details or even making an argument with those details. But at the same time, I do like numbers, so I'm not gonna give myself no credit here. Overall, I think I would go with two stones. So two stones into the analyst bucket. Builder's a lot more straightforward for me. I love building things out of nothing. It's where I feel the most comfortable and energized. So builder, easy five for me. Connector, I really get energized by relationships with people. I feel on a party or two in my day, but at the same time, I get some social anxiety when I have to meet someone for the first time. Overall, I'd probably give myself a three in the connector bucket. All right, so now that we have our buckets, let's create a Venn diagram of all three of them. Keep your stone allocation in your head. Okay, now that we have our Venn diagram, let's look at every corporate job. I know this isn't every corporate job, but it was just a nice Google search result, so just bear with me. Okay, cool, got every corporate job. Let's put them on the Venn diagram based on what type of people would be energized by them. 
Obviously, all of these coincide with each other. You're gonna have to talk to people in any job, so people are always going to be a bit of a connector, for example. You're gonna have to analyze in every job. But this is just a gross simplification, and I think it's enough for this exercise, so just bear with me. At the top, we got all of the really heady jobs. We're going to be deep into data and understanding how things work and trying to find the value within things. Once you keep going and you're kind of in this midway path between analyzing and connecting, you get into the opsy stuff. I think it's because in ops you got to understand what's going on in a given process, so that's super analysis heavy. But at the same time, the way to fix what you found wrong in the problem is by working with people. Moving into the connector bucket, these are the cool kids. These are the people that usually get paid the most based off of their people skills. If you're the type of person that just has that really powerful personality, you can light up a room and you wanna get paid for that, definitely look into these types of functions. And then you get between that connector and builder area. And these are the people that really like to make something from the ground up, but they use people to do it. Then we get into the builder zone. It's kind of a combo between the nerdier stuff, but also the more creative stuff. So you got engineering, obviously, they're building software, they're building hardware, they're building a bridge, like just anything. And then you have this gray area between analysts and builder. And these are people who build fixes to problems that they've analyzed. And then the middle, kind of more towards the builder side, we have product management. So kind of a jack of all trades, master of none type of career. Okay, so now take your stones and think about where you would be on this Venn diagram. You don't have to get it exactly right. You can just kind of eyeball it because I kind of just eyeballed where all of these careers are and you don't want it to be too exact. You don't want to overthink it. So here's me, for example. Puts me pretty close to product management, so it makes sense that I would choose that as a career. Because there's definitely margin for error, take maybe the three things that are closest to your dot. So now that you got your three things, you should reach out to people who have done these three things at a high level. Just go on LinkedIn, search the function, search an aspirational company, blast a bunch of emails or inboxes, and, and then validate your hypothesis or our hypothesis because we did this together. Maybe you reach out to someone in sales and ask them, hey, would you consider yourself a connector? And is this job fun for you as a connector? Does it energize you? The answer is yes, you may have a winner for your full-time career if you are in fact a connector. Another cool thing about using three of these dots instead of just one and having that exact answer is I think people can be applicable for multiple jobs or you can even let the market decide. So if you can't figure it out yourself, just apply to both and see what people will take you to do. All right, so let's get rid of the Venn diagram. Bam. Okay. So main takeaways of this video are you have to understand what energizes you. So know yourself and do not overthink it. Just put yourself into these three buckets and that should be enough. It should be super obvious. If you start overthinking it, you're probably gonna gaslight yourself into just picking the thing that's most prestigious or pays the most. So don't make that mistake. Just look at who you are in your free time, apply it to these simple buckets and understand yourself. The second part is understanding what jobs have tasks that energize you. So you can take my Venn diagram for what it is, or you can do the research on your own. Either way, you'll come to a good conclusion. So just talk to people, see if the job is great for connectors, there's a lot of connecting tasks, you find a lot of the time building, or you find a lot of the time analyzing. It's that simple, and just match it to your own interests. But yeah, that's seriously it. Just don't overthink it. Commit to what energizes you. Go out there, go be happy, go be great, you're a corporate weapon. All right, bye.